10 this morning, so we're going to go and get started with our Sunday school this morning. Sunday school lesson this morning. We asked Mother Barnes and Brother Casey. And Brother Barnes gives us a song, and Brother Casey gives us a prayer this morning.
we got to keep going. Our lesson for today is from the book of Ezekiel, 37th chapter, verses 21 through 28. And the subject is all for one and one for all. Now, um, Ezekiel is telling the people what God told him to tell them concerning their future. And he, as he starts off with verse 21, he says, Thus said the Lord, that I'm giving the people of Israel among the nations and bringing them home from around the world to their own land. And he said, God, and God told Ezekiel that he would make, <laughs> he would make them one nation in the land on the mountain of Israel. And one king shall be king of them all. There no longer would they be divided. <clears throat> they would stop polluting themselves with ideas, with idols, serving out of God and their other sins. He said, I, I will save them out of all their dwelling places. I'll cleanse them. They shall be my people and they will follow my laws. And it's also said, he said, they shall live in the land of Israel, where the fathers live, the land I gave to my servant Jacob. They and their children and the grandchildren shall live there forever, and David shall be their prince. He says, uh, I will make a covenant of peace with them, as an everlasting covenant. I will bless, would change. God showed him that things are not going to be like this always. One day they're going to change. Well, the same thing applied to us. We don't have Ezekiel here telling us what God said. But you know, we know from reading the word, praying, meditation, worship, we know what's going on. Because that is what that is the word of God and that is true. So we also know what's going on, even though we don't have Ezekiel here to tell us. But we do have people God has set aside to preach, to teach, and to lead and guide. And, and God told Ezekiel, said, said, you know, so, so tell the people, you know, he did not want the nations divided anymore. He wanted one nation on one accord, not divided up into two or three. And that's the way he wants, God was, in this lesson, he talked a lot about unity. He wanted the people to be together. And he said that he, wanted, he wants our church to be a body of believers, a body of believers, not two or three little groups here and there. But that's what he wants. And when you compare that to Ephesians 4, 1 through 6, and when Paul tells the people, to live and act in a way worthy of, <clears throat> of those who have been chosen for such a wonderful blessing uh, as these. And he said, be humble and gentle. Be patient with each other. Make an allowance for each other's faults because of your love. Try always to be led along together by the Holy Spirit and be at peace with each other. That God wanted to bring, instead of the two nations, the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom, he wanted to bring together under one room. And he said they would not be divided anymore. They got divided after Solomon died. But prior to that, there was one kingdom. And God said he wanted to bring it back like that and it'll never be divided anymore. And, and you know, that. that they say that we are all parts of one body. We have the same spirit, and we have been called to be to, to the same glorious future. For us, there is only one Lord, one God, and Father who is over us all. Amen. I'm sorry. There is only one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. Amen. And we all have the same God and Father who is over us all and in us all, mm -hmm. living through us in every part of the world. Now, um, at the beginning of chapter 37, which is really what you have to read to get it, to really get an understanding of it, it said, you know, Ezekiel says, 
He was carried away in his spirit by the Lord to a valley of dry bones. And the Lord asked him, say, oh, son, uh, the son of man, can these bones live? Ezekiel said, Lord, you know that. You're the only one that know that. And so the Lord showed him how to prophesy in different stages. One prophecy, skin came back on the bones. And one prophecy, uh, that, was, that was flesh on the bone. And the Lord kept leading him in all these prophecies. And when all was said and done, he had a whole army of people standing up, breathing. And God told him that, you know, the meaning of the vision was the fact that the, in Jerusalem, the people felt like they had no hope. They said they was like dried up bones. They had no hope. But Ezekiel would come to tell him, say, you know, and just like Ezekiel saw those bones come back, and develop into human being, he would tell the people, you know, that's what God's going to do for you. Because they thought they had, they had become a heap of dried up bones and all the hope was gone. But they were about to change. And another message that uh, came to, that God gave to Ezekiel, he, he was told to take two sticks. Said, right on one of them, Judah, and right on the other one, Israel. In fact, he, he said, he really said right on the other one, uh, uh, Joseph and, and Ephraim. Because he said, uh, he said, uh, Ezekiel was told to take two sticks of wood, right on one of them, the name of Judah, on the other, the name of Ephraim and Joseph. Judah is the southern kingdom, and Joseph is the father of Ephraim. In the tribe of the northern king, Israel. So he told him to do that. He said, take those sticks and you're right on there. And he said, then uh, put them together, hold them together. And, and that's what, let the people see it. He said, that's what I want them to see. That's what I want you to tell them to. They, the, where these sticks are joined to make one stick, that's why I want to join the two kingdoms to make one. Because I like unity. Uh -huh. And, and <clears throat> so Ezekiel said, in, in Ezekiel 18 and 20, it said that one who sins is the one who dies. You see, we, when we do all these things that, like Ezekiel would tell the people, but they had some kind of accountability now. And the two, about two Sundays ago, we had by Isaiah, we're talking about the new heaven and the new earth. But we don't just automatically go there no matter how we leave them. But God is telling us, and that when he told it is Isaiah, now he's telling Ezekiel talking to the people. But you don't just go there because you say, I'm going there. You, you've got to go through a period. you got to live something. And so that's what he would tell me. He says uh, in, in, in Ezekiel 18, 20, they were saying now, uh, the one who if you, the one who sinned is the one who died. He said the right the righteousness of the righteous would be credited to him, but the wickedness of the wicked will be charged against him. And you know, and believers are in in a covenant. <coughs> believers are in a covenant relationship with each other. We're responsible for each other. We are to help each other. And if necessary, we are to warn each other, or we are to talk, you know, talk to each other, say, well, you know what you said the other day or whatever, maybe you shouldn't have said it that, that or maybe you shouldn't have said it that way. Uh -huh. You know, and you got to know how to handle that, because if you jump in there and attack them, you're going to get attacked yourself. Mm -hmm. And nothing is accomplished. Uh -huh. But sometimes we can see our people, you know, we say, well, you know, I think that if they said it another way, it would have turned out better. So we have to ask God for wisdom because we're in that couple relationship. You are supposed to correct me. I'm supposed to correct you. And neither one of us are supposed to get made. Sometimes we don't have that way. <laughs> but, I mean, we are supposed to be in such a covenant relationship that we can do that with each other. We Sister Teacher, I hate to interrupt you right there in that flow because you're going good. But that's, a, that's an important point there, important fact. 
And so it's so important that I, I just got to ask this question right now. What happens when we don't? Because, you know, I, I'm, I'm a speak personally for myself. I've been, I've been in a relationship uh, where the relationship disintegrated, fell apart. And as I look back over my life, I say, this point in time in my life, I realized one or both of us was not in true fellowship with the Lord. Because, you know, two Christians ought to be able to work through anything. There, there's no doubt about it. Two Christians, two people who are following after Jesus Christ, who their desires to do the will of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, ought to be able to work through anything. So the question leads to to bear, either one or both are not walking in the path that they should be walking in. Because at the end of the day, we must focus on the thing that's most important, the thing that we agree upon. And the one thing we as Christians ought to agree upon is that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he died to save us from our sin. And everything else, sometimes we just have to step back and say, Lord, work on me. Lord, work on us that we may come together and not just continue just to, you, you know how they, how they say, if you pick at a soul, <laughs> you make things worse. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And sometimes sometimes we just keep picking at it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. instead of letting it heal. That's right. I'm, I'm sorry. I... <laughs> no problem. No problem. But that's, what, that's the way we need to be with each other. And we need to be looking out for each other. Like I said, when someone, we're in a covenant relationship, so we ought to be able to talk to each other and say, you know, you ought not say that. You know, or say, well, maybe if you had said it this way, it wouldn't affect me. They wouldn't have reacted that way. But sometimes we are not where we think we are. <laughs> sometimes we think we are at point C, and we really never left point A. So it's not always, uh, uh, we're not always where we think we are. And, and sometimes the timing is off. It's not time for you to say that because the Lord got to grow you some more so you'll know how to say that. And see, and, and believers, we in that covenant relationship with each other, you know, every person is affected by the action of others. But it's not accountable for the action of others. Whatever things is done here in this church, it affects me, it affects you all. But I'm not accountable if someone else has done it. I'm not accountable for your stuff. I'm accountable for myself. Amen. But what you say or do in this church could affect me. Yeah. But God, uh, God wants us to grow to a point that we can have that strong covenant relationship. We need it. We need each other. And the church needs us. And see, as believers, it says, <clears throat> we are, every person is accountable to God for his or her own behavior. And I'm not going to have to pay for yours, and you're not going to have to pay for mine, because I expect we'll both have plenty to pay. Right. Not that we've been so bad, but I'm just saying we got a plenty on our own plenty. Mm -hmm. And so as a leader, we are called to worship and serve God. Where and how we serve him is based on our talents, our skills, and our calling. But we are all expected to give of our sin in the local church. God places there because he knows we are needed. And, you know, and since, since we are all different, we're not going to agree. We're not going to always agree on everything. But God wants us, he wants us to have enough unity that we agree not to agree. You know, we say, well, I really don't think that works. I'm really not comfortable with it. I don't think that works. And we're going to leave, but we're not going to leave mad because you didn't like the idea I brought up. I'm not going to be mad. And, and we just, we said, okay, we can't sell it now. We can't agree with that. When they don't agree with this, 
I don't agree with them. So we're just going to wait back off and pray and fast about it. Because that's when we need the wisdom, of, the wisdom and the guidance of God. But uh, we're not going, we're different, diverse group. So we're from here, we're from there, and all that stuff, and different age group. So we're not going to agree on everything. Mm -hmm. But God wants us to have that unity. Yeah. We may not agree on it, but we can, we can agree not to agree. Mm -hmm. So what he's saying, you know, uh, and, and God wants us to have, but whatever comes up, we must strive for unity. And we must seek God's guidance and wisdom. We all have jobs in God's kingdom. The body of Christ functions best and most beautifully when all the members serve God and each other at the best of their ability. If God wanted, wanted unity for the two kingdoms, he certainly wants unity for his churches. And he said, uh, you know, every believer is special to, in the Lord's eyes. Mm -hmm. He set us apart for himself. But being special to the Lord, it has nothing to do with the kind of work you do, how intelligent or successful you are. It's based on whose you are. Mm -hmm. So all of us are special to God. We may not be special to some people, but we are special to God. Amen. Yeah. And, and God, and that's why God wants to make sure his people stay together. That's right. Make sure they, they know how to live together. And he loves that unity. That's right. He wants to be on one accord. He wants us to, when we come for meetings or whatever, well, he wants us to be here happy because we are his children and we're special to him all believers all of God's children are special to him and that's what he wants he wants us to know that and he wants us to act like we're his children now you know we may be, you can't be God's child you know up until about one of one o'clock when church turn out, and then you become somebody else's child. He can't, he can't be that. Right. If you're God's child, you're going to be God's child wherever Where you go. You Amen. And you know, when you left the church, you were happy, or you came to the church and you took part in the devotion, whatever, and then you went out there to um, went to eat, and they didn't get your order right, so you cussed mine. <laughs> so I'm just saying how quick we can flip flop. <laughs> But we'll do that if we don't have God in us. Amen. And it takes time. We know it takes time because sometimes you know you say, well, I ain't going to be doing that no more. And all stuff before you know it, you've already done something you shouldn't have done. But I'm saying we can't trust ourselves. That's right. That's right. No, we can't trust ourselves. But let God work. God work us and he let us grow. Amen. He teaches us. He grows us through storms, through hard trials, yes. through the good times, through the bad times. He, he grows us. Yes, mm -hmm. And so you have to get that solid foundation and it takes a while. Then you get to a point where a lot of this stuff don't bother you no more. Mm -hmm. All of us can look around and say, child says, things that used to so easily be said us. Uh-uh, don't move us now. Amen. Cause now, Satan got some harder things coming. Every time you get at a level, like you get up past first grade, he brings you something in. Amen. When you ought to be in, 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 in uh, junior high, you're still back there. Yes. Because every yes. time you try to get up, you get down. But you know, if you keep working with God, keep right. praying with God, yes. keep giving it to God, and after a while, you you know, if you get over that hump, that don't bother you anymore. This, because nothing here is worth being bothered with. We all are going to leave here soon. And we just don't know how soon. But the thing about it is, when you leave, when your time comes, you want God to find you working. Or you want God to find you as a Christian. You know, you don't you don't have time to be bad and then try to get back good. That's what I'm saying. 
So Amen. if you are not on the path on that, if you're not on that old ship as I get on it. Yeah. But if you're already on it, just hold on. Just hold on to the anchors and hold on to it. Because you don't have time to get off and get back on. Because right. you just don't know where it is. And you know, it just it just and storms. Just look at the storm, the tornado that was in, I forgot what state it was, just this week. It could have been here. Mm -hmm. It could have been here and all of us could be gone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or we could be home trying to pick up the pieces and all that stuff. But he spared us. And, and you know, we're no different now than, than his other children. That's right. It's just not about us. But the thing of it is, and we go now. We're going to try to serve the Lord the best we know how. Mm -hmm. And I know sometimes, I don't know about you, but sometimes it seems like I'm supposed to be going forward, but you're going backwards. Mm -hmm. But I keep right on. I just get up and keep on going. Okay. Amen. Because you, you can see now, as you grow in the Lord, you can just look at and see. You can understand how temporary everything is here. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. It, a lot of things just don't matter no more. Things that you used to enjoy, I mean, it, it's not a big deal to you no more. Mm -hmm. So what if you don't get a new car this year? It's no big deal. You drive old. Mm -hmm. what, if, what if you don't, you know, remodel your house or do something like that? All I'm saying is that these things that used to mean a whole lot to me don't mean that much to me anymore. And, and the Lord, as long as the Lord continues to bless us to come to his house, then we're going to work as a song. We're going to work until he comes. Because we don't know when our working days are going to be over. Amen. And, and the Lord is saying here that why don't be, you know, he wants us to be in unity. He don't want us to spend a lot of time arguing, bickering, fussing about who was wrong and who was right and all that kind of stuff. Let God have it. Get him the hard part. And we, and we we sit back and reap the harvest because we trusted him. Mm -hmm. But we don't want to live in this world and be like the Hatfields and the McCoys on the West. And, you know, they've been banned for centuries and mm -hmm. centuries and centuries. Yes. And, and and the younger generation can't even explain why they are mad with each other. <laughs> the parents, nobody ever told them nobody. They just That's told them, right. if you are McCoy, then you don't have nothing to do with the hat. Right. 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 But right. they never explained to the children what happened. But as long as they said that's been going on for years and years, yeah. like centuries. Mm -hmm. So somebody, you know, some of this stuff ought to be taken care of. Oh, Why would you grow up like that, hating each other, but you don't know why? Mm -hmm. Someone asked, so what if, I don't know, but my granddad told me not to speak to a McCoy. Mm -hmm. What? So we don't want to live at, at that, that kind of simple level. And and whatever that used to so easy to be said us, we on the other side. And we're gonna move on. Amen. Because, you know, the time is short. We're gonna live on and we're gonna move on because we don't know when our time is coming. This is what I'm saying. God may not come back into 25 years, but that doesn't mean any of us will be here. Yes, also, uh, as, you, as you mentioned that, I was just thinking, you know, how, how Christ broke the barrier there with the Samaritan. Is what Jesus actually gives warning. She said, you talking to me? Mm -hmm. Jews don't have no, no dealings with Samaritans because this was a traditional thing. Yeah. But yet Jesus took the time to break that barrier. And we, we as Christians, we should take the time to break barriers. That's right. And we can start with some barriers in the church. My, my, my. And go ahead on. I mean, all we're saying, all I'm saying today, just like God God wanted, he united these two kingdoms. He said they're going to be one, they're going to be on one ruler, and they ain't going to be divided no more. But God don't want us divided in the church either. He don't want us divided in our homes, in our families. But <laughs> the thing of it is, we do divide sometimes. But what he's saying here, I want unity. He wanted these two kingdoms to be united. He wants our church to stay united. He wants us to stay on one accord as much as possible. Mm -hmm. 
And we know some little things are going to come up. But I'm saying from his force, we will, we're going to try to do it differently. Because, you know, that holds us back from our growth. That we can't make progress looking in the rearview mirror. So, you know, it's, it, it's just, it's just that it's time. It is really time. Mm -hmm. It's time to clear the air, clean the slate, and walk in a different direction. Mm -hmm. And see, like I said, it's not, you're special to God, not because of who you, your education and all that kind of stuff. No, 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 you're special to God because of who you are. You belong to God, you're special. Mm -hmm. And if you're special, he ain't expecting something good from you. Yeah. He didn't heal us. He didn't save us for us to come and act like sometimes we act. Mm -hmm. Amen. That was not his purpose. Amen. And so, he saved us. He provided for us. I mean, he had done wonders for all of us. Mm -hmm. So, you know, only thing left is for us to worship him. Mm -hmm. That's for us to worship him and thank him for all that he's yeah. done. Amen. And see, our lesson today shows us that God loves unity. Mm -hmm. And so should we. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's right. And when things go wrong, don't go with them. Mm -hmm. Are there any other comments? Mm -hmm. You got some more, Pastor? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> 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 I, I just want to say good morning to everyone. Good morning. Thank God for letting you stand up here and give that awesome lesson. Thank God for you. And and you were talking, you know, I was reading in the Sunday school lesson too, where, you know, the Israelites like were put out of out of their land. But God saw to it that he went got all his people, you know, and we're gonna bring them back and put them in their own land. Mm -hmm. And he didn't want no nation from nation and nation to be divided. He didn't want king, king. He's just going to be one king. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and one nation. Mm -hmm. And then and then he said he's going to live like you said, he was right on that stick. And then he left his cover in him for us. Mm -hmm. if he, we go by his cover do what he said. You, you do you read his cover and you use his cover. Now he said Everything will fall in place. Mm -hmm. and then you won't be out there worshiping no idol God, doing every other thing you, you, you were doing. He said, he was telling us in so many words, you do the right thing, do like I ask, and I, I, you, I'll be your God, and you'll be my people. My people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that meant we need to clean up our act, get ourselves together. And do what God will have us to do. Yes, because when we ask God to intervene in a situation or say clean up a situation or something to that that point, sometimes God stopped with us and you said, Well now I didn't do nothing bad and they did this to me and they did this to me. But God has to get us right so that we can receive what he'll call me. He don't always answer like he want to. Mm -mm. Sometimes he don't ask at all. He just take it away because he got to work on you. That's right. So it, it makes a lot of difference. Yeah, it does. Are there any other comments? Yes, good morning. Um, good morning. I, I love it when you went back and gave a real example when you said the church. Um, you talked about the McCoy. And, 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 and a lot of times we talk about issues, but we use, I like using real issues, people. Mm -hmm. So I love it, because I was going to say that, but you went back and said it. <laughs> um, I was just thinking this morning, you know, I, I, I look at folk all the time talking about they they free, they god and about what is right. But they don't want to deal with issues of folk. You know, like you said earlier, we make mistakes, but the problem is when we don't go back and, and attempt to correct it. Mm -hmm. we, we error. Sometimes we don't even error try, intentionally. Oh, no. Sometimes so, we don't even know. It. Right. So let's get it right. And you know, I, I always say, I, ain't, I, I don't care what you do. As long as you ain't doing nothing to harm my family, myself, my job, and, and, and my well-being, I'm good. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. I ain't mad with nobody. I don't care what you do. I don't care what you say about me, whether I hear it uh, uh, directly or not. I don't worry about what folks say, because what I learned a long time ago, folks talk about you, I can talk about them. So they ain't got nothing on me, we even. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, I, I just, you know, I, I post a lot of stuff, and I talk to a lot of people, and when I post stuff, folks will say, uh, they, they'll say, what's, what's going on? What, what's the problem? Well, I talk to people, so it may not even be my, my issue. It's, it's because I talk to people. I'm up at night, 11, 12 o'clock. People say, why are you up so late? I say, because sometimes people call me on a vent because they know they can talk to me. Like I had to step out a while ago and, and talk to someone. Mm -hmm. So I don't turn people down because people need somebody to talk to sometimes. Okay. So I try not to turn people down. Mm -hmm. but, but the older I get, I can't take a whole lot of foolishness. You know, I, I, I just can't take it. And, and, and it bothers me when the foolishness is in the church because um, um, if, if you talk to folks, it's a lot of foolishness going on in, in, in a bunch of churches. And it's just sad. We as black folk, when are we going to get it right? I mean, you're talking about the, the, the way the children act. They can't help it. I'm 60 years old. I, I've been there, done that, seen stuff going on. And, and I try to deal with folk. It, it's tough. But it's time to get it right. It's time for us to get it right. I mean, I, I, I was listening to a talk show the other day, uh, Joe Madison on XM Radio. I got to have I got to have my spiritual, I got to have my talk radio. But like he said, he ain't turning over his torch to no young folk. He a light there, and that's what I hate, these young folk talking about turning the torch over to them. No, I can't turn it over to you, because you ain't right yet. So I'll help you light your torch, but I'm not turning it over. So I appreciate what my um, 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 older folk do, because that's where the wisdom is. And I respect that, love you, and I appreciate your message. And you always does a great job. Amen. Thank you. And I want to ask you something. Uh, Brother Jackson just said that something about people thinking. And uh, because uh, I was on the phone the other day with the, with the ministry, I uh, called them for something. And an hour and two minutes later, my conversation was over five minutes. But an hour and two minutes later, we ended the conversation. I told my wife, I said, I say, it was a needed conversation because he needed to think. And, you know, sometimes, sometimes we don't give people opportunity. Uh, I've learned, learned a long time ago, if you just give somebody opportunity to vent, just so that they can get it off of them, because a lot of us are carrying around a lot of weight, a lot of baggage, a lot of burden. Mm -hmm. And it just gets heavier and heavier every day. So uh, appreciate those opportunities for uh, people to let me vent and for me to be able to let them vent. That's why, that's why a steam boiler has what they call a, a, a safety valve, a big valve up top, because if the pressure gets too tight inside that tank, you know what happens? It explodes. But that big valve up there allows it to relieve off so that it doesn't blow everything, everything apart. And I was listening to something this morning or last night, and, and folk were saying if you ain't, you know, if you, you got a falling game, if you ain't getting along or whatever, or you ain't got it right, it's time to get it right. I mean, I, I got some kids. I, mean, I got one that I don't ever hear from, but that's fine. I'm going to do my part. If they call me today to need something, I'm going to do something for them. Mm -hmm. But I'm not going to worry about it. Nothing I don't have any control of. But if it's somebody you know you ain't, and I don't try to get it right you know, for them, but they, 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 I don't know, they do what they do. Uh, more uh, other folks in the business, but um, the mother, but, you know, that's all well and fine. But I'm just saying it don't have to be that way. Because any time folk got children, you got to have that connection to the day you die. Now, it just bothers me. When people get married, they, they, they stop talking. You done had that bond. I mean, it's forever. You know, <laughs> we as black people, we just got to get it right. We just got so much stuff that we just need to sit down and have some, some coming to Jesus meeting sometime and put it out there. If you got a problem with me, let me know so I can. It might not even be nothing. It might be. It might not even end up being nothing for somebody else. But when you put it out there, and then I think about it, and say, "Oh, well, maybe I can do that different." You know, that's what we gotta do. But instead of carrying around and talking about stuff and all that, get it off your chest. <laughs> you know, it's time to get it right. Well, you see, we can't control. Uh, we can't control all circumstances, but we can control ourselves in all circumstances. Mm -hmm. That's right. 
and you can't be true to others, you ain't true to yourself. I say that all the time. And sometimes a person just won't, sometimes you don't have to say nothing, just have a listening ear. Mm -hmm. Let them rattle off, get it off, <laughs> have a listening ear, don't have to say nothing. Sometimes you want to show up the crowd and all that stuff. But, uh, you know, that's the way it is. But then again, you have to think about yourself like they always tell you when you're taking care of a sick person. Say, now, you look out for yourself. But you got to look out for yourself, too, because sometimes you're not right for what they got to load on you. That's right. Sometimes they fill up that garbage can, and they're going to come over and use yours. So you got to, you know, sometimes you got to pray about that and ask God for wisdom, because you may not be strong enough for what they get ready to lay on you. Amen. Amen. And I got to admit, I, I, I had to lie this morning. My daddy called me and told me, don't bring him nothing to eat. He always doing that. And I cooked on the grill yesterday. For him, but he don't know it. He don't know it till I get over there. But I had to lie to him. I told him, no, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna bring it back. I'm sure he knows better than that. <laughs> 89 years old, I got to do what I got to do. Amen. <laughs> Father, sometimes, uh, 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 this is an old saying sometimes it's better not to listen than to speak all the time. Sometimes a person just may just want that ear or that shoulder. Uh, just the listening ear. Exactly. And uh, I don't think it's a black and white thing because if you talk to people of all nationalities, families are going through things. This is just the time that we're living in. And it doesn't designate whether you're black, white, Mexican, any nationality. He's coming back. That's all I gotta say. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 We're just we're just going through a, a lot of things. Exactly. And and then the Lord tells us we're so we're supposed to be the light of the world. Yeah. But and, and even though we are the light of the world, but we have to make sure we don't have no power out of you. Exactly. I agree with that, but I am a black man and I'm concerned about black folk. And we have a lot of issues in the black community, and it's us because we are not doing what we need to do. No, it, it's going on in all nationality, because I talk to all folk. Matter of fact, my, my great granddad was a white man, so I understand that. And I'm, I'm not saying it from a racial standpoint, but I'm concerned about the black race. We have some issues, and, and the churches need to get involved, and other folk, these sororities and fraternities. I am concerned about my black folk right now, especially our kids. It makes a difference. So no, it ain't about race, oh, no. but it's about black folk. I'm a black man, and I stand behind that because I see issues going on in the church and all kinds of NAACP, all kinds of things. We just need to get it right. So that's where I'm coming from. That's that, that point. Well, once they get it right, get on the right path and move on. Are there any other comments? Not this concludes our Sunday school lesson for today. Thank you, Trustee, for uh, moving this morning for the Sunday school lesson this morning. We'll hear from someone from the class uh, on the church call or either in the sanctuary what they got out of the list this morning. Anyone? Did anybody get anything out of it? <laughs> Unity is important, um, especially in our walk in our um, life um, and just um, unity is important. <laughs> Anyone else? If not, we'll turn it over to our, now we'll hear from the youth this morning, I'm sorry. Hear from the youth. I want to say God wants everybody to be on one call. Um, this morning, um, because we don't have a chance to have Bible study with the youth, this morning we were working on, we learned about the book of Genesis that Moses wrote it, the last spanning over a 431 year period. And I'm trying to combine the Sunday school and also teach them about the Bible, you know, where they need to go and look so that they can learn about it. If they learn about the books of the Bible, they'll be able to go and search things for themselves. So that's part of my Sunday school lesson this morning. We talked about the book of Exodus. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Just people call we for the Sunday school for the youth this morning.
Now we'll hear from our secretary this morning. Minister of the Anderson Chapel Missionary Baptist Church and St. Stephen's Sunday Church School, the 18th day of June in the year of our Lord, 2023. School will call the order by Deacon Riggs at 1002. The hymn um, by Mother Barnes, Keep Me Near the Cross. Prayer by Reverend Face and scripture for today comes from Ezekiel 37, 21 through 28. The subject of the lesson, all for one and one for all. The main thought, Ezekiel 37, 27. Um, total teachers was two. Total attendance was 37. Total offer was $66. The weather is warm. The lesson was reviewed for 40 minutes by Trustee Wooden. Closing remarks were made by Minister Howard and Mother Dupree. For the adult class, Trustee Faye Williams. For the youth, all your officers remain the same. Thank you, Secretary, for that uh, reading of the minutes. Are there any corrections this morning of the minutes? If not, we will receive the, we'll receive the minutes that have been read this morning. So I know we're going into another uh, service. Service, so we're going to stand and say the word, amen. Amen. <laughs> 